You may have noticed for the dependent measures t-test and independent measures t-test, we used a very similar experimental situation, the effect of a blood pressure drug. For the dependent measures test, we had a situation where we measured the same people multiple times. We measured them after a placebo and after taking the real drug. In the independent measure study, we didn't measure the same people twice. Instead, we measured totally separate groups of people, one group taking the placebo and one group taking the real drug. There are actually some considerable statistical advantages to using these repeated measures designs, that is, where we measure people multiple times. Let's talk about some of these advantages, because if we can use a repeated measures design, it'll actually confer some considerable statistical advantage. First, a practical reason. A repeated measures design generally requires fewer subjects. Notice that each person is providing two pieces of data, so we actually get more from each subject in our study. Next, a repeated measures design is really well suited for studying changes over time. That is, the difference score is focusing the question on individual change or growth. So longitudinal studies are a good example of this, measuring the same person over many years. Now, for a statistical consideration, repeated measures designs are good for situations where there are large individual differences. And by this I mean that individuals differ a lot from each other. Blood pressure is a good example. IQ is another. Any situation where individuals differ a lot from another individual, a repeated measures design will actually yield better statistical results. Notice that each person in a repeated measures design acts as their own baseline. And so the difference score we're taking is really factoring out or partialing out the effect of where an individual starts. So we get a more statistically powerful test because the different scores are less variable than the original scores. Let's actually look at this. If I go over to that one group blood pressure.jump file, the one we use for our dependent measures test, let's look at the variability in the placebo column and the treatment column and compare that to the different score column. Let me actually give you histograms for each of these. First, the histogram for the placebo column. Notice individuals are pretty widely spread from around 100 all the way up to 150. In the treatment column, they're also pretty widely spread. Here, from around 95 all the way up to 145. That's a considerably variable distribution. And though we can probably see that the treatment is a little bit lower on average, that is, that whole distribution is shifted just a little bit, it's not a blow away effect. Naturally, if we were looking at this, we might just assume that sampling error. Now let's look at the different score column. I've retained the same scale range, that is, the range goes from negative 30 to positive 30, a range of 60, just like the other two histograms, but I've had to shift the location of the center. Obviously, a different score is going to be centered closer to zero than 120, like the other distributions. But notice how non-variable that different score column is. That is, the different scores range from just a little under zero to a little over positive 10. I've actually taken the difference score of placebo minus treatment in this case. Now notice, if you were simply looking at that difference score histogram and notice where the center is relative to zero, it's a pretty obvious effect. That is, it's pretty obviously the case that individuals are getting some relief. That is, their treatment is lower than the placebo. And if I actually give you the variances or standard deviations of each of these distributions, you can see that the difference score column is considerably less variable. The reason why is that we're ignoring all that interperson difference. That is, all the individual differences where somebody started are being subtracted out. And so we're getting a much more pure measure of the effect of treatment. Said differently, the same person measured twice is more likely to be close to themselves than one person versus another person. So by forming a difference score, we actually don't care where they started. We just care how much change happened. So this is one reason why a repeated measures design will tend to be more statistically powerful because what we're analyzing is that difference score column. And so if our difference score column is less variable, we tend to have more statistical power. This goes back to the power module. Notice that one of the factors that affected power was the population variance or variability. Because the difference scores tend to be less variable than the individual measurements across people, we actually get more power or we're more likely to detect an effect if there's one actually there. 
So there are several advantages to repeated measures that we should take into consideration when we're designing our studies. But there are also some drawbacks and problems with repeated measures that we have to be aware of. First, with any repeated measure study, there's a potential for carryover or order effects. This is because we're measuring people more than once. First, order effects is when one treatment is always second. And this is just true. You always have to have one treatment following another, which means there could be some effect of practice, fatigue, simply the time in the study, or anything like that. If you always have one of your treatments at the end of a study session, then it might just be that people are tired, and you'll wrap in that effect of fatigue with whatever measurements you make. We don't want to confound our studies, and so by having order effects, we have another explanation for some effect we observe. So we don't want those in our studies. Now carryover effects are different. This is when one treatment leaks into or carries over its effect into the other treatment. In the study I described with blood pressure, I specifically had the placebo before the blood pressure drug. Because notice, we don't know if this is a new drug, whether the half-life of that blood pressure drug is long or short. It could be that once somebody takes it, the effect of the drug will persist for many, many weeks. So what if we had our subjects take that blood pressure drug first for two weeks, measure their blood pressure, and then give them the placebo, then measure their blood pressure? If that blood pressure drug will persist in their body for several weeks, then even though we think we're measuring just the effect of a placebo, we're actually still measuring the effect of the real drug. That effect has leaked over into the other condition, which is problematic because we don't want to measure the effect of drug when we think we're measuring the effect of a placebo. Now, there are some ready solutions to these problems. Counterbalancing is a typical one, where we switch the order for half of the subjects. That is, some subjects get one treatment first, then the other treatment, and other subjects, the other half, get the reverse order. This will wash out small order and carryover effects, but it isn't a perfect solution. It won't remove the effects, it simply averages them out over the different subjects. The other option is, of course, to use independent measures, that is, separate groups of individuals, or a special case of dependent measures designs known as a match sample. So if order or carryover effects are very strong, we simply can't use repeated measures. But a match sample design is a nice solution. This would be an example of using a twin study. Twins are very similar to each other. So if we have one twin in one condition, and then the other twin in the other condition, we can still take a different score between those twins. In essence, we're treating them as if they're the same person. And notice that because twins tend to be more like each other, especially for physiological things, than they're like other individuals, we'll still get some considerable statistical advantage over simply using an independent measures design.